we could have a, a quick in, uh, uh, discussion about maybe like a five minute thing about uh, what we brought up online, the whole thing with the streaming uh, that's going on. You know, the, yeah, yeah, the we're Dune. What? Uh, we're Dune. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't mind uh, giving my two cents on that. Yeah. So what's, what's your? Sure. Uh, <laughs> what, what's what, what? I know that Matt, you said that your reaction is that uh, they're the devil, <laughs> basically HBO Max yeah. for releasing it a day early. Not that it matters whether it's the same day, day early, or or a week after it releases in theaters. Uh, but, I think it uh, matters. That's precisely what my problem is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, well, why does it matter so for you exactly? I, I, well, <laughs> go ahead, Matt. <laughs> okay. I mean, it, it, releasing it a day in advance on streaming is a move to kill the cinematic experience. There are way too many people who don't understand why it's important to actually see a movie of that scope and scale, the way that it was supposed to be freaking seen. <laughs> and if you're going to get it a day early and you're going to get it cheaper on a streaming service, it is a detriment to the time and effort and money that everybody has spent to make a piece of art that you're supposed to see on a big screen. <laughs> it, it's just wrong. And I mean, HBO Max has been a, a, a pain for years. You know, like it, it started off when they got South Park and they decided to censor every image of Muhammad <laughs> uh, yeah. it, it, that South Park ever produced mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. But I mean, like, no, you are supposed to see movies in a movie theater. That is part of what that's part of what separates movies from television. And that's what I mean, just like, you know, what separates humanity from the AIDS. We are supposed to go to the movie theater. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Jason? So are you okay? Mine mine is really simple. I, I completely agree with Matt saying or with what Matt is saying. I just think he's kind of being a little dramatic about it, but yeah, I agree with everything he said. Um, So my, my thought is this before the pandemic happened um, and, you know, every five businesses that we're even aware of are started closing down left and right. Movie theaters were already struggling. It's, I I just mentioned this uh, on Facebook right before we started, but like, it's not just this problem the whole issue with movie theaters is a layered and multifaceted problem. Um, There's a lot of things that need to be fixed and changed and whatever, but this is a part of the problem for sure. Movie theaters have to pay almost all of the ticket price back to the studios for the first like two weeks or something that the, that the films are, are shown. So they're really making most of their money off of concessions and off of, the movies that people actually go to see three and four weeks after they've been out and stuff like that. That's where they really start raking in money. Now they don't really again that much because people don't go see those movies that much. But the point is that um, as time went on and as uh, home theaters became far more reasonably priced for the average person, you and and also as multiplexes, the average multiplex started getting worse and worse and worse. And the viewing experience in movie theaters got worse and worse. More and more people started watching stuff at home more and not going to the movies as much. And that's a lot of people's fault. That's the movie theater's fault. That's that's just, that's a whole other thing. Like I said, multifaceted problem. But so long as we're all on the same page that we want movie theaters to be a thing and we want the option to go see big movies in theaters, we need them to stay alive. And they're not staying alive right now, they're dying. And the last thing that we need, if we all want movie theaters to be alive, is for streaming services to offer the option of showing movies at the exact same, like releasing them at the exact same time as the theaters. That's awful. Because half the people who go see movies 
are seeing it because they're hyped because they just came out and they're like, you know what? I want to go see it right now. The movie I'm, I just saw that the, the Ridley Scott movie, the last duel just came out tonight and I'm psyched because I'm going to go see it tomorrow. Like if I, if we weren't doing this tonight, I would be there seeing it tonight right now. Like that's how a lot of people are. You know, they want to go see it as soon as they possibly can or at, at their earliest convenience. And even if people aren't, necessarily even if they're the kind of person who was given a choice between watching it at home and watching it at the theater many people would choose to go to the theater if that meant seeing it two weeks early but as soon as you start releasing them at the exact same time the the movie ticket sales are going to are going to drop <laughs> so in my opinion uh i'm totally okay with these streaming services having their stuff and whatever and showing movies I'm even okay with them showing them earlier than they used to. Cause what did it used to be places like HBO and things like that? They used to put movies out that were like maybe like four weeks out or something like that. Five weeks. They, you know, there was a, there was a certain amount of time that it used to be. I uh, usually it would be like a couple of months. If yeah. Know. So months even. Yeah. Well, like basically the, uh, when, when the DVD would drop maybe a month later, but usually it's basically yeah, pay -per -view. Like the theatrical one is close exactly. to done. So they, they gave them a, a cushion of time is what they used to do for the theaters to make their money. Now the streaming services are starting to put them out earlier and earlier and earlier. And as the, the earlier that gets, the more damage it's going to do to movie theater industry. So that's my problem. And, okay. and like Matt said, it's, it's bad enough when it's like right after it came out, like a week after or two weeks after. It's even worse if it's the same day. And it's just a slap in the face to do it a day early. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and also, like, it, it, this isn't just a, a, an issue of it being a blow to the the film exhibition market. I mean, like, yes, that's a good I, point. I, I mean, like, you know, the, the this is a this is a problem that we've been looking at for a long time. I mean, you know, I had a two K projectors set up in in my place in dc for four years and when you realize like holy crap i've got i've got a 2k projector at home and then i can go out to the theater and spend 15 bucks and get a ticket to watch a 2k projected image there you know you you kind of start to you know throw in a cost benefit analysis and like okay do i really want to go to the theaters for this uh, i mean if you don't have any good theaters around you right right i mean the theaters are kind of shooting themselves in the foot i mean there were theaters in my area in dc that actually had smaller screens than i had at home <laughs> uh so i mean i, I i'm not putting all of this on streaming services that you know like exhibition yeah, right. yeah. It, 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 you know film exhibition has been a problem for a while now but the thing is attention to detail is something that exhibits itself on a larger screen uh, there there's there's a trailer out for this uh the this show la brea um I vaguely remember that yeah. and, and it looks like crap with with a trailer you're supposed to put the best you're supposed to put your best foot forward with the trailer right if if you're making a comedy you're supposed to put the funniest moments in the trailer to get people to go to see your movie right and if ideally the trailer, if the trailer doesn't make you laugh then it's probably not a good comedy right uh, la brea looks like crap <laughs> hmm. what does that have to do with, with, with I, I, I'm, get, I'm getting I'm okay. getting get, okay. this will not be five it, minutes I guess at this point sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I'm joking I'm joking but go ahead yeah yeah it, I and if you move if you move cinema to the point where you're not expected to put it on a big screen where, where you're not expected to put it on the largest possible exhibition format that you can in front of an audience, a, a, a discriminating audience that can actually examine every inch of your movie, you are going to get lazier movies. 
Yeah. <laughs> Over well, time. I mean, we've been getting that technically, like with digital, like yeah. capture and stuff yeah. like that. But I, I personally think that um, none of this really <laughs> matters that much. Uh, I think it's all happening regardless. Um, like laziness or, and there's always going to be the, because it's ultimately an artistic form. The, the people that are making it, you're always going to have shitty comedies that look like crap and are lazy, but then you'll have people like Denis and, and other ones and Spielberg, that Nolan, that would always have this obsession with quality and and put, doing things on a grand scale and, and all that, regardless of the medium that it's going to be shown at. And then slowly I'll backtrack, I guess, with my my argument um, for my opinion. This comes up a lot when filmmakers even talk about the theatrical experience. And ironically, most of them don't actually watch too many movies in public or on a very big screen. I'm sure they have big screens at home and all that. Some of them have even film projectors. But you know, generally, they don't really watch it on an arc light size screen. And they don't watch stuff in public very often. So it's tough for them to even argue for it. And sometimes they'll even say, like, well, you know what? I mean, ultimately, like, it was tough for me to see in theaters all the classics and foreign films and stuff like that, the small town I was in. But at on the TV screen with some of the channels, you would or old VHS tapes and things like that. People often talk about that the, the really serious movies are the ones that they often saw on TV because they were old, unless you ended up in a later phase, early 20s, you start going to revival theaters and stuff. You catch up on seeing more and more things on the big screen. Lawrence of Arabia, the vast majority of people who's ever seen that movie only saw it on TV, most likely even though it had a very long theatrical run back when it came out, and even though it's showing up at the Aero Theater almost every month. Uh, and there's a reason for that, because it's a big movie. It makes sense why it, why it shows up there every month. But ultimately, I saw that movie on a, on a tiny 21-inch TV or something when I was growing up, and it was magnificent, even on that screen, because the human imagination... It takes you there. You see the the scope. You see the the deserts. You see it still registers. It's not exactly the same thing, but it's that's that's where human imagination comes in. It's it's the same thing with horror. It's the same thing with comedy. Like you don't need to see a Hitchcock movie with an audience to feel the tension in the crowd. If if you re respond to it, you'll respond to it alone in your own uh, room. It's actually scarier points. sometimes. Yeah, question or uh, two, two comments uh first up on um, the off chance that anybody ever listens to this and <laughs> they're not um from the la area just for clarification when gil said arc light size screen he's referring to what uh arguably used to be um one of the greatest movie theater chains of all time um and is now probably left to one single theater now after covid um but uh to respond to what you're saying I definitely agree with you that technically speaking, when it comes down to it, no movie has to be seen in a theater. Any movie could be seen in any way. I mean, you could even appreciate a movie watching it on your phone, you know, if you're really you have a great phone or something, you know, but there that's just getting down to the discussion of at the end of the day, what's the superior way to see a movie. Now, granted, um, sometimes an intimate experience alone in your house can have benefits that are better than a crowded theater full of terrible moviegoers. Because let's face it, if you go to a multiplex, oftentimes that's what you're stuck with. But um, ideally, though, if we're talking about in a best case scenario, watching a movie with good moviegoers or very few moviegoers in an auditorium with good sound and good seats and good everything. I mean, how can you beat that? You know, yeah, I mean, no, talk no, about the and, same and, movie that you said, like, like just if you were to watch Lawrence of Arabia for the very first time and you were seen at a great, you know, at like something like, you know, the landmark or something, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But to finish up like my uh, argument, kind of get it all the way oh, back. I didn't know you were done. Sorry. sorry. 
Yeah, because I was tracing back the uh, all the arguments that you made. Yes. Um, is Please. I, I'm not against the theatrical. I, I've always had a very different uh, understanding of it. People want to get out. People like going out. They don't want to be stuck at home. To me, the theater was never a way to watch movies. It was a reason to go out and do something that I really enjoy, which is watching movies. And yes, if you watch a comedy, which the fewest, the, the, the genre with the least, except for horror maybe, like that I, I go to theaters is comedy, ironically, because that's technically the, the genre. That and horror are the only two genres where really there's an impact if you're sitting with a big audience, because you're laughing together or you're mm. gasping together. But really, you sit down and watch dramas, which is 90% or action movies, 90% of the movies that I go see in cinemas. The the there's no I don't buy the whole thing about oh because there's other people like you're sensing their energy not nah, really if it's not a horror or a comedy no and you're right sometimes that people that interrupt but sometimes in a good revival theater for example you sit down and watch Barry Lyndon and they're cracking up and, and you know Kubrick's humor that definitely adds to it it's not to say that the communal experience can't be elevating in certain circumstances but but i actually think that in 70 80 percent of them it's actually not especially generic theaters uh but yes sound size of the screen all those things enhance it which is why you're paying for it more than you would at home but i i think ultimately and this is even growing up i remember my friend was a was a worked at a, at a theater and i'm sure you guys know this as well people come to the movies a lot of people they don't know what they're gonna see. Yeah, they, they, they literally yeah. ask the person at the register, so what's good? They just wanna get out of the house. The, the, that's why I think theaters are never gonna die. They're just gonna, it's just gonna evolve. It, it's, it's like the actual theater. Uh, if you watch Hamilton on, on Disney Plus, it's not as good as seeing it. Of course not. Uh, live, uh, even more so than movies, because that's an actual, live cast doing it in front of you so that's a stronger difference than than say a movie at home to a movie in the theater yeah. uh, but but there's something there there's something there like if, if i go out and watch the dark knight in a theater it's more impactful than just sitting and watching it at home but i still appreciate the movie to the same degree it's just that the experience itself is different which again it's why people go out and that's why i think theaters because of what happened now with co and i think and to finally get to the point of why i think it's okay in this specific case and uh, they've explained it basically there's a segment of the population that doesn't still feel comfortable going to the theaters so they feel like give them the option and then the people that do want to go to the theaters they can go i i don't think that this is going to continue long term i think they they are going to have some gap uh, whether it's two weeks four weeks um, whatever is going to satisfy. Uh, but I do think that theaters will no longer be the same. I think they are going to be perceived of like, listen, they're streaming. We have great TVs and projectors at home. It's not really too much about the quality. It's still going to be better in a theater because it's bigger and louder. But ultimately, the theater is a place you go to because you want to get out of the house. And, and there's just going to be less of them. There's going to be less movie theaters. And hopefully the ones that stay quality will increase because you'll have less you know uh crappy theaters because the people that really care about it will will select the, the better theaters um so so i think i think it's from going from four thousand screens or whatever like they they went up to it might drop to two thousand screens and uh but it's it's still gonna be there just like theater just like the opera Opera used to be the, the the biggest like ticket seller in the world a hundred years ago or something like that, and now it's a very, you know, there's like uh, very few tickets being sold, but it still exists. So I think that's what's going to happen with the movie theaters, and, and that's okay. That I think that's fine. It's it's bad for some people if if you live in a small town, uh, if it's going to diminish the number of movies that you can see, but you can stream them at least, and you have that as a backup. I don't think it's the end of the world. I, I just think it's where the world is. Um, so I don't I don't lament it. And honestly, I have kids. I, I can't get to the theaters, even if I even wanted. So the fact that I can see Dune 
close to when it comes out. And I don't mind waiting a couple of weeks just so you feel better about it. But I'll probably won't see it the day before. I'll probably see it two weeks later because that's when I'll get around to it. But I don't think it hurts anything. Uh, but from a business standpoint, yes, they have to make their own calculations. Like, do they make enough money from the streaming to to uh, on on ticket sales and, and all that? And and what's going to happen with the negotiation with the theaters? All that stuff is a different piece. But as far as being too precious about the theatrical representation, as long as there's some amount of it still being done for good movies. I'm satisfied. I don't need 4,000 screens. All I'm going to say, and we can wrap this up and... uh, I I got something after you're done, but go ahead. Okay. Uh, If if you say that you saw Dunkirk and then you follow that up with, I watch it on my phone, I will punch you in the fucking throat. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, no. Well, you I mean, I, I'll give you an example because Jason said that. For example, I saw whenever I see a movie on an airplane. Yes, that's a bridge too far, and, and also on the phone too. I wouldn't do that. A tablet, maybe, but not a like an iPad, but but not a phone. I think at that size, and especially the screens on airplanes that are kind of shitty. Uh, I saw Silence, the Scorsese movie, and I really felt like uh, you know. I fell asleep during it, and I, and I know that <laughs> you know, the, the, just the, the mood and the, the cinematography and everything probably would have elevated the experience, but I just could not, I didn't get much out of it from that well, tiny... That, that, that was Preto who shot it, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, that, yeah. That, that deserves more uh, more attention. Yeah, uh, so, so I'm, not, I'm not, I'm, so I'm completely agreeing that it's at a certain point, but at the same time, I saw Dunkirk on an IMAX theater with Jason, I believe, and yeah. it sucked. Like I, I didn't like the presentation. I actually I regret it and 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 hoped that I had seen it just on a normal screen because the IMAX thing spoiled it for me for different reasons because there's too much headroom, there's inconsistency in the and the compositions because of the whole jumping from format to format and and the the the, the grain um, the grain density changes. It really annoyed me, but but I, I'm a very specific type of person. <laughs> so, so you see, the, the other extreme can also be bad. Well, I, I, I mean, obviously I am too, and uh, we, we can have that discussion another day. But uh... Side note, I, I was happy that I went and saw Dunkirk uh, in IMAX, if nothing else, because Christopher Nolan was doing so much, putting so much effort into trying to make it an experience. And mm-hmm. as we all know, that that very well might be one of the last movies to ever be shown that way. You know, now with how terrible everything's going, but um, it, it, I I do agree with Gill that uh, yeah, I do agree with Gill that uh, while I'm glad I went and saw it, um, I do remember walking out and going, "Good lord!" Like I could have seen this at a regular movie theater for half the price, and and it would have been still been really good, you know. <laughs> but um, anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, one last thing I'll say. I saw yeah. Interstellar at the uh, Landmark on their couch theater, which is the smallest screen they have. But you're sitting on the couches 15 feet from the screen. You're pretty close. Uh, so um, so the screen is, the ratio of the screen is still as big as the big one because you're closer to it. And and it was great. And the composition stayed the same. And it was all two, three, five. It was consistent. And um, I, it wasn't grain shifting back and forth. And I know that it was not shown that way on IMAX. And I think I had a better experience than than if I had gone to see it on IMAX. But but yes, but that's a different... <laughs> yeah. I'm just well, saying I, that like all, just, all forms of... Uh, we, we could yeah. have a whole episode about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, someday quick. we will. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to say... Um, that it we really shouldn't have this discussion of uh you, you know streaming services uh streaming the movie at the exact same time as the um as the theatrical releases without at least briefly mentioning the whole issue that we're seeing now with like Scarlett Johansson and all these other actors who you know signed up for the movie expecting a normal release and uh as such you know got their pay structure set up in a way expecting uh you know a normal you know exhibition 
And as a result of this, of like, you know, like I said, all these people who have this option to go see it at home instead, you know, ticket sales are suffering and they're not getting their back end money. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's a good place to end it because I said. Well, wait, 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 wait. One, more, one more thing. One more oh, yeah, thing. Go ahead. Go. But the business important. part, I completely agree. I mentioned that, yeah. that that's a thing. Yeah, you did. Either. You did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But one last thing I just wanted to say, just just because, Gil, you did make a good point of saying, you know, you said like uh, that you you do like the laughter energy at a comedy um, or the surprise energy of a horror film kind of thing. But the majority of things you see in theaters are not those genre. Right. And you said something to the effect of that you don't really see you don't buy into the idea of like the communal energy in the room kind of thing for other stuff. Except for revival theaters, there's definitely a, a different kind of energy. Well, yeah, that's what I was going to say is like, I don't know how you can possibly say that because the three of us all went and saw Bloodsport at the New Beverly. And when you've got a sold out auditorium of people going, Kumate, Kumate, Kumate. I mean, you know, it's hard to beat that. No, no, there's definitely uh, revival theater is is by far the best um, uh, communal experience, but that's a different thing. That's that's like going to a comedy club. Like you, yeah, horse you really are. Club. It's yeah. it's like-minded people coming to laugh, or in the case of revival theaters, coming to celebrate. Uh, it's like going to Comic Con. It's it's yeah. it, you know, it's a bunch of fans. No, that's a that's a good point. That's a very good point. Not random I, I, I strangers guess enough. In a sense. I guess the the best thing would be if we could always strive for that kind of audience, like going to the arc, like going to the landmark. But even that's less than half of that experience because you're not, you know, you know what I'm saying. But if the, if there was some way to guarantee that your audience, that your fellow audience members would always be enthusiastic cinema people, that'd be awesome. It's just probably not possible. Yeah, no, I mean, Landmark and Arclight has better crowds for sure. It's it felt that way to me, but but it's still not the same as a revival theater because again, no, it's, it's certainly a, not it's a fan base showing up as opposed to uh, a bunch of old people, young people all mixed in together, moving True. fans, not movie fans. But yeah, no, I, I mean, it's I I I, I again, I don't um, I don't disagree with the with the the feeling and the argument that that you guys have it's just that i i'm not as precious about it and and this is probably because i don't watch as many movies in theaters as you do so i always Could felt be. i always felt like less precious about it and I've, I've definitely watched more movies over the course of my life at home than in the theaters i just find that the theater is the little extra oomph and whenever you want to get out because you don't want to be stuck at home all the time that's just yeah, yeah it's, it is what it is